Okay, so now we're recording, and now I'm going to start the broadcast. And you can uh, turn on your webcam. Okay. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our November web uh, webinar for the uh, Illinois Council of Teachers of Math, ICTM. And this month, we have the pleasure of having Adam Petzl, a former board member of ICTM, joining us to talk about using Desmos Activity Builder lessons in the classroom. You may know what several of those words mean, or all of them, or uh, I, I guess if you knew none of them, this might be challenging, because uh, if you don't know what a classroom is, you'll be learning a lot. Um, that's that's but, very true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Adam uh, is, among many other things, uh, also one of the first class of Desmos Fellows, um, which means that he spent last weekend learning about the latest and greatest things that Desmos is working on. Um, I'm going to let him uh, talk, but just in case you have not been on one of our webinars in a while or never before, uh, in your control panel, there should be a questions section. You can use that section to submit a question to Adam. Uh, he might see it or I might see it for him. Uh, it won't broadcast out to everyone, but that way we can kind of facilitate what's going on. He is uh, offered to stay with us for at least 45 minutes. And if people have more questions to, to stay past that, so that'll be great. Um, if you have any issues, please put them in the questions box um, or you can um, text me at this number that uh, I'm about to put in the, the chat window. Uh, so with that, uh, hopefully there are no other issues. I'm going to turn off my webcam. Uh, we're going to let Adam take control of the screen and show us about Desmos, Desmos Activity Builder. Okay. Well, thank you, Sundal, very much. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, I, I love the opportunity to do this because uh, Desmos is just something that I've been very excited about as an educator, as I know many of you are as well. That's why you might be here. And others may only have introductory knowledge, um, but you've heard things. And it's definitely worth hearing about because if we want to have kids really learning math actively uh, with great representations and a chance to really give students great feedback and, and get good, great conversations, then the suite of tools that the Desmos team is creating and can, continues to create is really one of the most, in my opinion, just one of the most cutting edge and just effective tools we have as math educators to accomplish some of those goals. So today, um, just to look at a few of our, our goals here, um, I hope to, to, in the next 45 minutes, accomplish these four things with all of you. Uh, number one, we're going to try in the webinar format, we'll give it a go here, is that people can experience a quick sample Desmos activity builder activity. Because um, I think that it's one of the best ways to start learning is just to put ourselves in the roles of students, even just for a few minutes. While doing that, um, I'd like to be able to, for goal two, kind of demonstrate and discuss uh, the, the teacher tools that go along with these activities so that teachers can give students feedback and, and use student work to generate great discussions um, and kind of check formatively for class understanding. Um, the third goal is once we get a taste of it, um, to be able to understand some of what already exists uh, for existing activities that are out there and how as a classroom teacher you could look at what exists, and know how to find one that fits your goals and your students, and then be able to use that in your classroom. And uh, number four, we only get into the basics of this today, unfortunately, but maybe another time we can go on more, is just the idea of, of, of editing existing activities. Because um, sometimes we know that we find things, but we want to adapt it, switch the little things, get rid of certain parts or add parts. And it's really um, very easy to do once you uh, get in and look around. And once you do that, not a goal of this webinar, but obviously you can create your own activities as well. Um, and once you learn to edit, it's really just one little step away from doing that. So that's going to be our goals for today, and I'm very excited to jump in with you. So to clarify a, a few things we're going to be talking about today, um, I want to first clarify a couple things. Um, the first thing is, is that when we talk about Desmos, um, there are a few different uh, platforms or tools Desmos offers. Most people, when they first think of Desmos, think of the graphing calculator. And so here at Desmos.com, um, we can see their, their homepage. When we hit the Start Graphing button, this takes us to the Desmos calculator which is, is free and amazing and can replace uh, pretty much most graphing technologies that are out there and, and do all sorts of amazing things. Today's session won't be focused on, on this tool, but just to, to highlight again, um, you know, with this tool, um, as we type things in and graph things, it responds by keystroke. 
um, things like sliders and implementing tables um, can all happen very quickly just through, uh, through quick drag and drop and, and entering in what, what we would like here. Um, and uh, there's all sorts of amazing opportunities here with the calculator. But actually, that's not the focus of today's session. But this is the Desmos calculator. Um, going back to their home page here, you may notice at the bottom here, there are a couple different choices at the bottom. On the left, we have a, <laughs> some other calculators for Function and Scientific. In the middle, what we're going to talk about today is the teacher.desmos.com. This is where the digital activities exist that are used creating the calculator and many more features. And then the right, I want to point this out just at the beginning of the webinar, because if you get nothing out of today, if you learn this one thing here, this would be great. But people often say, where do I go to learn more about Desmos and how to use these tools in my classroom? Well, it's right here. When you go to learn.desmos.com and we come here, they have great tutorials for getting to use the graphing calculator, for looking at classroom activities, which we're going to be focused on this today, and also some tips on professional development. But if you want to learn to use the graphing calculator more, I highly recommend coming here to learn.desmos.com. And if you just take a look at them scrolling down here, everything from just images on your screen to doing statistics and restrictions and regressions, parametric equations, all of these lead to real helpful and, and uh, clear tutorials for how you and your students can start using many of the, of the features for Desmos. So with that said, I'm going to go back here for a second. And like I said, today's goal is to learn about Activity Builder and the Desmos activities. And that right here is what we're talking about, the teacher.desmos.com. So as I launch this, I want to point out a few things here. So one, at, at teacher.desmos.com, um, first thing you would need to do is to create uh, a free account. And I'm going to go ahead and, and sign in into my existing account at the moment. And I can sign in. And what we're looking at here is kind of a, a collection of different types of activities and features that our Desmo, the Desmos team and other teachers have built for teachers to use, edit, and create in their classrooms. Um, and so, like I said, I think the best way to start getting this is to try and experience it a little bit. And so what I'm going to model here for a second is launching a, a, a quick activity for, for all of you to try and engage in if you're at a spot where you can. Um, if not, you can follow on my screen, but I'm going to see if you can all do that as well. Um, so just explain what I see here is as a teacher right now, I'm going to go to my custom page where I have some custom things that I have edited or built. And uh, the top one here is my ICTM webinar. So if this was a classroom activity, I, I would click on it, which it is right now for us. And as I click on it, um, this is showing me, it's reminding me of the screens I, that are in this activity. What I'm going to do right now as a teacher is, is create a class code. Because um, uh, the class code here is basically uh, giving me a, in this case, a five-digit you know, five code here that we're going to use to launch this activity. And let me explain how this works. Now, if you're totally lost thinking, wow, I'm not even sure what Desmos activity is yet, well, we're going we're gonna to experience it right now. But basically, it's going to be a series of screens where the screens can ask you to do a variety of things. And the teacher has the option to view all, of, all that's happening, to show it back to students, um, to uh, control student progress, to give feedback, and many things. So this is what we're going to do. Um, basically, I'm going to ask you to be a student in my class right now. And I'm going to ask you to not close down the GoToWebinar uh, window. Whatever you do, don't, don't close that out. But behind that, or alongside, you can open a browser and we're going to go to student.desmos.com. Um, and we're going to type in this code, Q73JQ. Um, many of you on my teacher side, I can already see that about 10 of you have already gone onto that website and logged in. And, um, and I can start to see how many more of you have. So it's good. So again, just as this is happening, um, we're going to go to student.desmos.com and type in this code, Q73JQ. Now, as you're doing that, um, some things to note is this code is specific to me and my class. So I instantly, I'm seeing all of you log in, but it's, it's every time we do a new class, I can get a new code. And another teacher using the activity gets a new code. So this code is specific just to me. Now, looks like people are 
our login. So Sendel, if you could maybe make sure that that code appears in the in the chat window. Yeah, but in the chat, um, is there a maximum oh, to the number of people in a class? Um, no, there is there is not that I'm aware of. Um, I don't know. You know, in a typical class, we're talking about you know twenty to forty students for sure. Not. I don't know if Desmos has a, a cap up when you get near a hundred or two hundred or something, but not that I know of. Good question. I've never heard of that. Um, but here, um, oops, one second here. Q seven three J Q. Now, many of you, some of you are already starting, which is which is great. If you see your screen in front of you, um, you can begin. I'm also going to model on mine. I know you may be looking at your screen and not see me, and that's totally fine. We have a Q73JQ. Um, but while you're looking at it, I want to mention, if just, just I'll just talk over you a little bit, is that uh, you may notice when you logged in that students have a choice of signing in with Google or to sign in with Desmos. Totally not needed. Students don't need to create an account to do this. You can do it just on any computer at any time. But if your students do create um, a login, the really nice thing is then Though Desmos will give them a log of the activities they've done, as well as if you start a class, if you start an activity in one day and want to carry it over to the next, it will save their progress. Also, you could be used for homework or different types of out of the class activities. That's all there. So many of you are starting and going on, and what I'm going to be doing here is 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 for those of you who aren't able to get on, if you're in a place where you can't, I'm going to kind of be showing my screen at first, talking through some of the slides, but I encourage you to. Kind of look at your own here, and I'll be pausing everyone in a minute or two. Um, but we're going to start. Many of you are in. You may have noticed from the from the slide that at the top of your screen, and for students, there are simple arrows to navigate. You can always go forward and back um, at any time uh, during the activity, um, and so students can navigate their experience there. Um, many of you have already completed the the first screen where we're comparing experience levels, um, just using a little slider here and. And we'll see where people rate themselves here as they go th through. In the activity today, I decided to use this Algebra 1 theme just because we were spanning middle grades and high school. But I really want to emphasize that the tools here can be adapted and are very flexible. To whether you teach third or fourth grade and whether you teach calculus, you really can design or use existing tools that are really quite amazing. Um, so if you haven't done this, people are kind of estimating uh, where they're point maybe for these lines of intersection. Um, and so good. Many people are making making progress here. All right. Okay. Um, good. Okay, wait, what just happened? Um, your screen probably just said paused, I bet. And that's because I paused it. So don't close down your browser yet, but right now you're not able to do anything. But can you make sure that you can see my screen for the moment? So if you can just go to the webinar screen and look at that. I want to pause you for a moment because I want to show you uh, some of the, the powerful nature of the Desmos Activity Builder and some of what <laughs> I am just continue to be astounded by what's offered here. So if you're looking at my screen now, um, yours is in the background somewhere, this is called the Teacher Dashboard. And the teacher dashboard um, allows me to see many things instantaneously as you go through it. And again, all free, which is amazing. On the left side right now, you may see I'm scrolling down your names. And I can see who's all logged into the class right now. And next to your names, I see a little bit of a, of a, a, little bit of a linear uh, tool that just shows me where people are at. So I can kind of see where you're at, at in the progress. On the screens as well, we can see where people are at, um, how many are on screen 21, how many are in, or sorry, how many are on screen 3, how many are on screen 4, and I can see this, this here. Um, but where the power comes in is that obviously I not only just see where you're at, but I can see what you've done. For example, on screen 2, I'm going to click on screen 2 and pull this up for a minute. Um, but on screen 2 as a teacher, I can take a look and see individually all of your responses here, which is pretty neat. But what's way neater than that is that Desmos gave us tools like Graph Overlay, which is going to take all of your all of your responses and put them onto one um, put them onto uh, one picture for me. So if you can see here, uh, basically, I see in my class here with you all, I see a great range of no clue to super familiar, which is what I expected to come through. But it's pretty neat that in certain things, we can take a look at the class and, and bring this up to talk about or to look at and to see individuals. Um, I'm going back to all screens here. Some other things I could take a look at. Again, some of you have been on screen 
on screen three. Um, on screen three, again, just a note, maybe looking at my screen, hopefully, you can see that I can see all of your individual responses. But some of the power here involves, for example, the graph overlay. And the graph overlay, <laughs> this is kind of neat, we can kind of take a look at the range for where you all thought those red and blue lines might intersect. And we're kind of clustered around there. So we can see that we are, we're definitely all in a ballpark, um, but definitely some variation amongst that. And also cool on the dashboard side as a teacher is the summary phase. Here, based on what you did, it tells me what were common, you know, common answers here that people gave and who gave them. And so this is where, as a teacher, I mean, at different points, we can pull this up as discussion tool, discussion tool to talk about why people chose certain things, to compare and contrast responses. But it allows us to, to have great, great just feed, you know, knowledge, formative knowledge of where the students are at, what they're saying, and we can use that in our, in our discussion. A very common question teachers have about the dashboard um, tool is, well, don't students sometimes get wary that their names are sitting over there and their names are attached to all of the all of the responses? And that's a fair that's a fair question because sometimes yes, we know that math anxiety is a real thing, and if students know their names are attached to it, they may feel a little iffy about having it come up. Which is why on the bottom left you can see three very special tools on my bottom left. These are called the classroom conversation tools um, that were an amazing addition to the activity builder. It's called anonymize. The one on the left here. And when I hit that, it replaced all of your names with famous mathematicians' names. That's pretty neat. And so now, basically, all of your, all of your identity is now anonymized, um, and we can talk about responses in terms of the mathematicians. And when I unpause your screen, you will see that your name in the top right of your corner has been replaced by a famous mathematician name. So you know who you are. And as I walk around, I know who you are. But we, we can keep an anonymity in the class if that's the goal. Another thing, just before I unpause your screens, I just want to make a note here. Another common question teachers have is, well, what if, what if students put something inappropriate for their name or typed in something inappropriate? On the very top of this blue screen, we see a manage class tools up here. And this tool right now is a tool where basically I can go through, and if there are someone who is putting in inappropriate things, one, I can figure out who they are, but two, I can go ahead and hide them from the class and that way their responses will not be included um, in that. So it's a, again another nice management tool that Desmos has provided for us. Well there's much more to show here but I want to go back and, and with my teacher tools. You may notice that I paused the class. That alone is a great tool because there's many times as a teacher we want to pause and have, have some discussion. And let me unpause you now. So you're now unpaused. So if you can go back to your web browser where you were um, uh, working and go ahead and carry on for a little bit. I'm going to give you a, a few more minutes here to to try and uh, just work through a few more screens. Um, and while you do that, and it's a little bit annoying, I'm going to be talking over you a bit um, just to share some things with you. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but but feel free to go back to your screen. You should be able to be working ahead now. And good, I see some of you are making some progress. Also, don't feel like at this point you have to complete every screen in its entirety. If you are at something, maybe you haven't even done systems of equations in a while, uh, please, please, don't feel, um, please don't feel like you need to stay and figure it out. The big goal here is to get a taste of some of the different types of screens that exist. Um, especially once you get past the fifth slide, where a lot of you are on now, and you get towards slides six, seven, and eight, I wanted to give you a little taste of screens that, that you can create or use that, that aren't involving the calculator right away. So one limitation people think is, oh, this is only for this is only for graphing, only for plotting. And while it's amazing for those things, there's many more things we can do with that. Because one, the, the calculator, as you get to know it and learn it, you can the, per, the calculator is also, I think of it almost like a, a computer program as well. You can create amazing types of tools and people have and, and use other people's things in there. Uh, um, to, to do representations, whether it be fractions, um, whether it be uh, geometric representations. Um, but in slides six, seven, and eight, as you get there, um, we also can put in questions um, for students to answer. Uh, one of the really neat things is they made an ability to make card sorts. So you'll see a card sort that you'll be able to do. And, um, and uh, on the, there's some about a writing and sketch tool, so students can draw, sketch, circle, write answers. And there's even some features here that aren't included as we go through. Um, but uh, 
as you're going, I'm just, I know my screen's being recorded, so I'm just going to speak to what I see again. Um, again, as I see it, you see on my screen, I can see the pro progress of the students, of, of where many students are, and it's in real time as they're moving along. And as a teacher in the classroom, obviously, um, you know, I, I could have this dashboard open, and if I have a mobile tablet, it'd be great to be able to walk around and see where people are at and interact with people that may be a little behind or seem to be stuck. I can look at screens. Um, I can also, you know, have this put up on my my, my uh, projector in my classroom just to kind of you know get a feel for where people are at uh, as we go through. Um, but it's good. I can see you as a class. We're making good progress through the activities here um, as we go through. And Adam, uh, Jim yeah. was wondering if we run uh, an activity that a different teacher has created, can we still see all of this information that you have on the the teacher screen for the activity, or is that only if you create an activity yourself? Uh, good question. No, yeah, so so with, if I understand the question right, if you're using someone else's activity uh, that another teacher created or that is available on, on the Desmos platform, when you run it, um, when you run it, you get a blank teacher dashboard, and as your students log in to your unique code, all of the data uh, will be just yours. And, and, and also, Desmos will archive this data, so you turn to it the next day or, you know, after the weekend, um, even compare it, you know, a year later, you can archive these. And so it really is nice, Sendel, that, um, that uh, again, it, it, even if you're using someone else's activity, it, it'll always, your code is unique to you and it'll always track just with, just with your students and your data. And so you have yeah. access to all the functionality, even if it's someone else's activity, but the data is um, under your control. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, um, the, the question I'd asked you before, Elizabeth actually answered um, that she has seen the Activity Builder working with over 500 people, and it did not break. Oh, that, so that's that is cool. awesome. And that's what I assumed. I mean, because with Desmos, they, they have a slogan. You know, as Sendel said, I had a great privilege of being accepted in their first cohort of, they call it Desmos Fellows, which are about a group of 40 people who just really excited about using uh, these tools to help students learn math. And we, this past week, we went to San Francisco. And one of their models, one of their models was, uh, sorry, one of their guiding principles is, well, let me, let me read these to you because they're just amazing. Uh, the first guiding principle they use in developing stuff is one is do no harm. <laughs> they don't want their products to do any harm in terms of learning and mathematics or potentially creating you know problems. That's a good guiding principle. Another one they had is trust teachers. <laughs> um, another one they had is uh, uh, is it works every time. And I think with Elizabeth's comment there, when they say works every time, they they really do their best to say well to say it only works for 50 people means it doesn't work every time, does it? <laughs> So they try not to put any restrictions on things like that, or they have a lot of ifs or ands or buts, but things that will work every time. Um, yeah, they also have a principle of design for the classroom and design for delight, which I thought was a neat one too, as we see some of the pre-made activities. They want people to delight in mathematics and have experiences to see the power of math and making predictions and, and solving problems and making great visuals. So Sandal, I see that, that we've got a comment from Scott about uh, slide eight. Um, yeah, so Scott asked, many of you on slide eight, many of you are working ahead now, and I'm, I'm going to pull it back together here in a few minutes, but it's great. On slide eight, um, yeah, there was a sketch tool, and it was the one asking where, where's the mistake. In fact, 26 of you are there now, and um, it's a good question. So we'll look at this later, but pretty much, to be honest, early this afternoon, I, I just got out a Sharpie and a piece of paper, and I, I, wrote, I wrote out that math problem on a piece of paper and took a picture out of it with my phone. Looks like I could have done better lighting. But anyway, um, when I edited the slide, it just let me upload my own picture, and I put it right in there, and and that was it. So it's actually not the calculator at all, and we'll see it's a little different, a little different feature. Um, but uh, it's you can just upload your own picture right there, and students can draw on it, write on it, you know, uh, color it, and um, and again get a lot of feedback. I do have to say with the sketch tool on slide eight, I mean it's not the most precise drawing tool yet, if you're trying to show a lot of work or do a lot of math with that, you may notice that it's, it's, it's not going to be um, you know, something where students could show a great deal of work um, and be kind of clean in that. But for, making, for, making, for showing smaller amounts of work, for, for marking up diagrams, for marking on a graph certain features of a graph, for circling things, 
um, it really is a, a the sketch tool just uh, opens up the door for so many things that you can that you can upload your own picture or put your own graph in there and have students work on that. Um, again, as you're going on, I, I'm just going to let you keep moving on, and you probably <laughs> sorry if I if my talking over your work is is distracting. I know the webinar format that's a bit weird. Um, but, uh, but you may notice multiple times in Desmos is as it asks, I, I had it ask you to share your reasoning, uh, to, to share what the next step was, or to share how you made your prediction. And after you did that, for most of you, you were able to see, you were able to see three responses by your classmates that randomly popped up. Um, this again is another great feature in Desmos that student work is not meant to be separate, that that we want technology not to create just less interaction, but we'd like it to, to establish and, and create more in this sense that we have access to more people's ideas and more people's work. So, so as, as students have a chance to see other people's responses there, you know, it's a chance to, to learn uh, from, from others and to compare theirs with others. And I'll show in a bit as teachers, we can, we can use that as well to, to, for classroom purposes, for great discussion later on. Um, yeah, so good, making good progress here as you're going through. I know now this is where again you may say, well, if they can see if they can see other students' responses, that's where people, some teachers get worried about management and say, well, what if a student is typing in something inappropriate um, that you know they made fun of somebody and it pops up on the screen? Well, to that I would just say that number one, you can let your students know that nothing is anonymous on your side. You will be able to know everything and anything that people submit and type. So it would be unwise uh, to, to engage in that behavior. Um, um, but also that's where, again, once that happens once, we have the tools to manage the class and hide students' answers from the class um, and take students away uh, that, that uh, have lost that privilege for now in the class, if that be the case. So I put that out there as a little bit of a slide there. All right, so I think as far as time goes, what I'm going to do now is something interesting. I want to show a different tool and something called a teacher pacing tool. And a teacher pacing tool <laughs> is, what, what just happened? Well, I just forced you all onto one screen. I know you are at different places, but the teacher pacing tool allows me as the teacher to control where we're at as a class. And so right now, not everyone has been here yet, but on this one, there is a question screen. I thought it'd be a good chance to, based on what you've seen so far, feel free to you know, type in some, some questions here um, as it goes through. Um, you know, just to think about what you might do here. Um, some people are asking, how do I build one? You know, how do I find those? And I definitely will definitely look at the basics of that um, to, to do that. Um, so good. So again, so some people typing in some things. This is great. Um, and good. So how do I start my own? How do I edit my own? How can I use it for upper elementary? These are great questions. And we can touch on these as we get into the, into the back uh, into the back room of the Desmos Activity Builders to look. All right, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to ask that, um, that uh, basically I'm going to, do, I think it might be in the middle of a question, sorry, actually I won't pause it. If you can bring up my screen, so if you can stop asking your questions for a moment and go back to my screen, so please go back to, to my screen where uh, you can see my dashboard. So go back and, to uh, go to webinar. Yes, go back to the GoToWebinar screen so you can see, see my dashboard. Um, so, so again, I just want to point out a couple things, and I'm going to show you behind the scenes a little bit more. Um, just some cool things. This is where we could, spend, we could spend hours just talking about great stuff. I just want to highlight a few really neat things. Um, you know, again, here, basically, going back to certain slides or students' graphs, I can take a look at individual students' responses and take a look at, again, the graph overlays to see kind of the, the various things. We can pull this out from the class. We could talk about, uh, again, the choices that were made. Just many, many nice things here. I want to point out that uh, for the one that asked you about the question about what happens with these two linear equations about their intersections, again, I can see all your answers. Um, I can also look at a histogram and take a look at how many of each people said which thing, just as far as the feedback we can get. Um, on the card sort, just want to show again that basically here I can see um, the green represents students that are correct matches. The red are ones that are not correct yet. And so again, just feedback that we can have here. I know some teachers who actually had this display up on their projector, and as students did it, they'd scroll down sometimes, and students could see in their mathematical name which how they were doing at certain points. I also see a summary, which is great. Most common incorrect groups 
most common incorrect cards. Again, we know at times it's maybe diving deeper here, but you can imagine just being able to use this information um, to have some good discussions and to talk about common mistakes or different types of answers that, that go through. Um, and again, like where is the mistake card here? Just want to show again that um, I could take a look at different people's responses, like here's Jacqueline Ferens, and take a look at what Jacqueline did. We could pull it up as a class and talk about some different things here. So again, just many options in the back screen here that, that we, have app, we have options to. So the question now is, okay, let's go to, let's go to the next part of, the, of this goal of the webinar. Is that's kind of a quick taste, right, of, of one, one activity, and you see a Maya on the teacher dashboard, what I did. And before I leave the screen, I want to point out in the bottom, that teacher pacing and the pause class are just down here. It was as easy as me pushing these buttons. And for teacher pacing right now, I just click the screen I want you to go on. And if I want as a class to proceed one screen at a time and discuss as we go, I can do that. Um, or I can let you go on your own by turning off this. So there we go. All right, well now I'm gonna leave this screen for now. I'm gonna go back to teacher.desmos.com, which is where we started. So teacher.desmos.com, our next goal is to look at how do we find and use these in our classroom. And so first thing is, um, on the left, I just want to point out here, there's a couple tabs. Number one is on the home screen, obviously there are some featured activities here that, that go down, um, and things called bundles. But there's some tabs here as well called most popular, some things that are very popular here that have been used quite a bit that scrolls way down. Um, there's latest, <laughs> that shows things are latest. But probably the most helpful is the search bar you know, to look at things that we're doing up here. So for example, if, um, if I'm a teacher and wanted to look at, is there something for fractions for elementary a little bit? We can take a look. Here's something called fractions on a number line. So, so okay, well, let me look at that. Let's see what this is. So as a teacher, if I'm using the search bar and I'm searching around, I pull up the screen here. And here's what you want to do as a teacher. Um, don't create a class code yet. We're not ready to use this as a class. But what we'll do is a student preview. So when I click student preview, what this allows me to do as a teacher is basically to try out the activity, which is great. So this is exactly what the students will see. And I can basically go through this activity and take a look at, um, at what students would do along the way. And we can see just the types of things students would do. Um, here's comparing fractions on a number line. And, and uh, these screens are actually mostly made with the Desmos calculator. Again, it doesn't look like a calculator, but again, it's such an amazing tool once you dig in there a bit. But so let's, there you go. So I can come back. I can come back here and um, and just go back one more time here. Let's say um, I want to search for activity again, and, and maybe I'm doing absolute value here. Um, I can take a look and see. Here's something called polygraph absolute value. So there's some different types of activities here. Again, bigger than today's scope, but a polygraph. If you've ever played the game um, Guess Who with the little cards where you have to guess who people are by asking yes or no questions. Polygraphs are great activities that are, it pairs up students in your classroom and one student sees a screen, the other doesn't, and they try and ask yes or no questions to, to guess back and forth. Amazing for polygraphs, you should look into it. Um, again, maybe I'm looking at quadratics. You know, we can take a look at what kind of things come up here under quadratics. Lots of things here are coming up. But let's say, okay, well, let's go a step ahead now. Let's say I decided this I looked at this quadratics review for the blue elevator from Andrew Stadel, who is an amazing math educator who's, anytime you see his name on stuff, my suggestion is look at it. Um, but let's say we went to this, and I took a look at the student preview screens. I tried it out, and I thought, okay, this really fits what I'm doing next Tuesday. I want to try this. What are my next steps? So my next steps are really just this easy. So if I know this is the one I want to use, and I'm going to use it as it is, then as a teacher, I go up here, and I create my class code. And um, under this class code, the most recent one, I had done this before, the most recent one is, is right here. OK, well, if I just click on that, <laughs> click on that, my dashboard opens up. But it gives this nice screen that I could just project to my students, or I could tell them this code. But like you did, they just go to student.devmos.com, and they type it in, and we're ready to go. As a teacher, I mean, this is, this is it. I'm ready to go. Once, once they're in, my dashboard is open here in the background, and that's it. We're ready ready to go, and they're, they're working, and I'm walking around and helping, using the dashboard to get some feedback. I think we might want to have some good discussions for later. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's how, we, how we do that. Um, I want to go back to the main screen for a second. Um, 
to the main teacher.desmos.com page. And um, it's loading here for me. It's activities. So on the right side, you can see a little bookmark activities, which is nice because you may wonder like how I find stuff or how I use it. Well, over here under bookmarked, once you start bookmarking things, you can bookmark things to run later to know where they are. The main thing to know about here is, is that I also have a history button that shows everything that I have done and worked on, whether students are alone here. And I have a custom, a custom uh, you know, tab as well that shows me everything that, uh, again, I've edited. But let's, let's go back a second. So, Sandra, let me pause for a second. Any questions have come up that I should respond to at this point? Yeah, Before there are, I talk about the next step. I think, uh, number one, I think people are really excited by this. Um, I think they some should people... be, Sandal. They should be. <laughs> I, every time I see this, I get excited. I, 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 it's honestly, I, I just can't believe that these tools exist and are free, and, and they keep getting better. Going to Desmos this past weekend, I, I can't share everything with you guys, but it continues. The vision does not end here. They have a vision that continues on in the future with more and amazing things that are coming down the pipeline. Anyway, Sandal, sorry. I have to contain my excitement. Um, <laughs> what... what uh, what, uh, what are a few questions that might be good to address before we keep moving on? So one question was just around um, the fact that some of these are community activities and some are um, activities that I guess the Desmos team members themselves created. Um, can an activity that you find end up being deleted before you want to use it? Uh, like if That's you search for it, does it, is it, could it disappear? That's a great question, because you have noticed that when you look at the activities, it says who wrote it. So the ones that say by Desmos were made by the Desmos team and often are very high quality. But they also review ones that are done by teachers at times, and not every activity made by a teacher uh, comes into this activity board, which I think is a great model, because it, every time someone makes an activity, if it all ended up, we'd already have tens, you know, thousands of activities here that would get too, too big, and some of them would be quality. So Desmos controls which activities make it here, and they're, they're not just going to go and delete one they put on here. They put it here because they want it to stay, and it will be here. I want to make a note, too, that some, some of you who are familiar with Desmos will know there are some very special Desmos activities, too. There are regular activities, like the ones that we can make as teachers, and there are ones that they make with their special tools. Ones, for example, like here, Central Park goes above and beyond. This is an amazing thing. When tools that we don't have access to yet, ones like Marcellus the Giant, Ones like Water Lion t Tile Pile. These are all by Desmos team, and some of these do things that are just, again, uh, crowdsource student data, have students' data carry through an activity um, in ways that are just, again, if you haven't done these, you're going to have to play with these later. But All right, Sandal, is that, is that good? Um, another teacher, uh, another yeah. person was wondering if uh, you as the teacher have to be signed in to Desmos while your students are working, or if they can work when you're not signed in. Oh, good question. Because uh, you, don't, you don't have to be signed in. Um, once you've started your class, so to speak, and the code is out there, that code remains live. Uh, it remains live. To be honest, uh, I, I, I think I'm right here. I, I think it's kind of live forever. Um, that you know, students who are absent could come in later and do it. If you, wanted to, if you wanted to run a project and make something live now and have students work on it over the course of a week, like a marble slides or something where they really could do a lot of good work on, or create a picture using graphs, then it is open. Yeah, you can log out. It does not stop the activity. Students can log in and out as long as they've created a Desmos, um, you know, free, uh, uh, um, you know, username. They could work on it on Monday night. Come back on Tuesday. Work on it again. Come back on Friday, and then on Mondays, as a teacher, you could look at how everyone did. So, so it's a great question. Great, and you may be getting to this in a moment, but I think uh, another couple of people were wondering about copying slides from one activity to another activity. Yeah, so let's go there because I know for time-wise, I just want to make sure we get there. So our, our, our next goal was looking at, oh, okay, well, how do you start copying slides? Or Because sometimes you'll find an activity and you're like, oh, I really like it, but slides three and four don't apply to my classroom. Or I wish it asked this question instead. Well, that's very easy to do, too. So let's, let's take a look at that, for example. Um, let's just say, for example, I was looking at a modeling activity, and um, here's one called a mocha, a mocha modeling, all right? And so I previewed it. It looks pretty good. There's a few things I want to change. Really important here, in the top right um, in the um, dot, dot, dot menu, uh, Sentinel, is there a name for a dot, dot, dot menu? Uh, I, I don't know. But I would call I it know. an ellipse. Here. But yes, the dot, dot, dot menu. OK, the dot, dot, dot menu. When you click on the dot, dot, dot menu, 
a um, couple of things happen. Uh, one, we can share the activity with another teacher, you know, email that to them. Like we could say, hey, check this out, and we can email it to them. But the other thing is to copy and edit, and this is where a lot of your questions were. So when I click copy and edit, it's going to open up something we haven't seen before. And what it opens up is this is very important. This is the behind the scenes creating and editing platform that the Desmos team gives us as teachers to, to work magic you know, here behind the screens. So in order to start thinking about copying screens or, or, or editing, just to look at this for a second, you'll notice it's very intuitive. On the left side are all the screens that are in this activity. And so, so if I know there's a certain slide I want to, to touch up, I can instantly click on that slide and be able to go there and, uh, and, and change some things. So for example, let's just say, for example, on slide three, it talks about back in 1902, there was something here. Well, first of all, anything on here, you know, I can, I can change the text. Um, I can change the text and, and do different things here. Um, if I don't like this image, um, I, feel I, could, I could exit out and I can, I can start playing around with what's here. You can look at these, and I wanna, I'm going to X out of all these for a second because I want to show you something. So when you're on a page that's blank, these are the options Desmos gives you to create material. We can do things from the graphing calculator. We can do sketch tools. I can input videos um, from media. I can, I can create notes of just writing text for students. I can create inputs, which are uh, uh, going to be questions I have to answer, um, and all these great, uh, all these great options here. Um, yes, and under choice, under choice, I can go ahead and create different types of true/false, multiple-choice options that they can work here. So here is something to play with. But this is where, again, that as an exit out, you can see the things here. Some things I've learned that are helpful with teachers are people tend to say, well. How do I organize it? The Desmos team was smart. Basically, it'll organize itself for you. You don't get options. For example, if I wanted to do um, an input screen um, with a media screen, it automatically puts it side by side. You may notice that certain options up top are no longer available. It's because it has preset what, what, um, you know, what we as teachers can do on the screen at one time. And basically, as you play with what you want to put in, um, it, will, it will tell you what you can or can't do. Um, but some things to note. So one over here, you may say, okay, here's a slide here. This was okay, but I didn't like it. It, it. it wasn't what my class was doing. Well, above that slide on the left is the dot, dot, dot menu. And if I click on that dot, dot, dot menu, I can, well, duplicate it or delete it, which is nice. In this case, I can delete it. Am I sure? Sure. I'm sure. So I will delete it. And that's now out of my activity. But in its place, I wanted to put a different slide. So on the bottom here is my plus sign. And so I hit that plus sign, and there's my blank screen. So now, now right there, I can go ahead and um, I can and I can drag it around if it was not in the right place. It's all very, very user friendly. And again, now instead, I wanted to create a screen where students were going to answer a question, maybe an maybe an input. Um, and so up top, I could I could type my question or directions like answer this question. Um, and maybe I wanted to put a note on top, something they're going to respond to. So this is where I could type in my question about um, what are the uh, intercepts for something. Um, and I can go on. There's even down here a, a math notation button where if I want pretty print math. Um, it's nice because I can go back and forth from, from regular text to things that will look more pretty in math print. And down here, it gives me options like showing, do I want to show students their Classmates' responses, that's the default, or I don't have to. Um, do I want them to enter text? Do I want them to enter math? And this is where, to be honest, I know this is all kind of fast. This is where, I mean, in, this, in the goal of a 45-ish minute webinar, I want to give you a taste of what's available here. I know that the next step, there's obviously, we could, we could have a lot of great time together. Maybe we'll have another session here in the near future where we could look into more details back here. But I'm hoping you get the taste here of what's happening. But here's some thoughts. So as you edit something or move something around, um, I could do a preview. And the preview allows me to see exactly what the students will see. And this is very helpful because, again, I, you're creating things. I, I always um, want to be able to uh, test it out and see what my students would see. 
And so each screen by screen, I can test them all out as I make it. I can come back and and um, and uh, you know fix it. And let's say now after some editing, I made some minor edits. I deleted a slide. I changed a few things. Now I'm ready to go. The next question is, well, what do I do next? Well, let's do that. So I would hit next, of course, because that's what's next. So I hit next, and um, it basically is going to look at here and. One thing you notice up top is just make my activity public. And this is something where if you want to be able to share it with other teachers or to have Desmos be able to have the option to look at it at some point, you can check that. Um, usually just leave it checked. It doesn't hurt. Um, and then I'll hit done. And when I hit done, I've now edited that activity. And, um, and here it is. But let's say, again, let's say, again, this was a, you know, I did that, I did that on a Sunday night getting ready for my and Monday class, you may say, well, Monday starts. Well, what do I do? So, so Monday happens. I have this thing I want to try. How do I do it? Well, back on our home screen of teacher.desmos.com, I would go under the custom menu because, again, this is where my custom edited and custom created files live. And the top one, there it is. So this is the one that, that it says by Desmos, edited by you, which is nice to remind me that, that I've messed with this one a bit. And just like before, when I click on that, um, when I click on that, it's opening here. It's going to show me again the, the screens like before. And one of the options will be to create a class code. So it's no different. I'm going to create a class code. And um, looks like my internet is slowing down just a bit here. But there we go. So I have my class code. And uh, just like before, I can tell my students, I can give them this code, I can write it on the board. I can just tell them to go to the student.desmos.com and they are set to go. And so that's how you would edit something briefly and show how to use it. Um, one more thing, I, this just, just for those of you who said, okay, I'm getting excited or maybe I've done this before, but how do I create my own? Again, very simple. Well, I mean, at least <laughs> simple to start. I mean, it takes practice to get to know the tools a bit. But when you go to custom and you look at the things that are yours to custom, in the top right, there's two choices to build. New polygraph, which are those um, guess who activities, which we didn't look at today, or new activity. And if you click new activity, well, that's it. Now I'm going to title my activity and basically get started here. And that is how I would begin creating my own activity. And as I edit it and as I create it, I can always find it in my custom to continue to work on it. Because you can always go back and edit your activity again. Um, so you're never done. You can always edit it later on and get a new class code and keep working on it. So I know we're coming to an end here um, as far as our, our allotted time. Um, let me take some questions. Let me give a few, let me give a few last thoughts here um, as, we, as we come to a more formal close. But definitely we'll stay on for, for other questions and things like that. Um, let me pull up um, this PowerPoint again just for a second. Um, so when people are thinking about next steps for using Desmos, some things that I would encourage them to do is is number one, if the Desmos calculator is somewhat new to you, um, I definitely recommend that learn.desmos.com site and take a little time and do a couple tutorials, start to get comfortable using it um, and, and experiencing it because that alone, without doing any activity builders, is be such a great thing for representations and, 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 and just rep and connection, connecting representations. So that's a great website. And obviously, if you don't have a free teacher account at teacher.desmos.com, well, get one. And then when you go there, Start searching for, for topics that are in your class and start doing the student previews. Look at some of the activities. And as you do that, it's great because you'll start to see some of the possibilities that can be done with Desmos Activity Builder. It'll, it'll awaken your mind to some types of ways to use the tools they, they give. And then either using pre-existing activities or, or editing them slightly will give it a whirl. You'll give it a shot in your classroom. Now some thoughts on in a classroom, some things teachers will ask about or think about. If sometimes people say, is it better to have one student per computer, like doing it alone? Is it better to have two students on a computer, kind of working as a team? And uh, with that one, it definitely you know, depends on your goals for the activity and your students. Um, but often, you know, often when students are new, I have to say, I, I found some good luck if you have laptops. When you do have two students on one laptop working together, well, just again, there's another element of inter action there, that they're working together, going through, talking about the slides together, if there is some, some early confusion that they can help each other out. And so often, sometimes a, a two students on one laptop can be a great way to encourage interaction um, as, they, as they work on something together. And, and obviously, the goal of this isn't just that students get on and, and do an activity and get off and are done. 
as teachers, we know that so much of why we, like technology will never replace us because it's our job as teachers then to use the feedback that technology gives us and have those great discussions with students, to come back and pull up the slides where students did some neat things, where, there's, where there was some confusion, where there were some different types of responses. And we can project those screens in front of the class and have good discussions or to use that to, to how we're gonna begin our next class. And again, at times, it makes a lot of sense to pause the class and discuss something right then or to use teacher pacing and have everyone go to a certain slide where, where you can make sure everyone is answering a certain question. I know some teachers that were a little leery to start said when they first started they actually used teacher pacing and just had the class go one at a time together, you know, to talk about it and go through and kind of control the pace. And if that's, if that's more comfortable or makes more sense for your students, then teacher pacing tool can be a great tool for that. Um, but like I said, Sendel and everyone here, I, I, I'll open up to any questions people have. But I, I just, uh, you know, I hope that you can, if, you, if you're not that familiar, that you can get a taste today of, of just the amazing possibilities for, for meaningful learning. <laughs> for students' responses being able to be shared and used in great ways. And, and like I said, there, there are activities that Desmos team has created that are, are well beyond what you saw here. If you've never done something like the Central Park or the Water Line, their newest one is Marcellus the Giants. Um, they have uh, one called Penny Circle. That Once you get used to some of these and see where it fits in, that, that there's some just amazing amazing uh, programming behind some of these that are well beyond you know we can do but that our students would benefit greatly from so Sendel, there we go so so do you want to before we end up for questions did you want to talk about a few of just the closing things here and then I'll open up for questions would that be good yeah that would be great uh, I know um, okay. uh, people may have to go um, just wanted to tell you a few things uh, before uh, Adam opens it up for questions as you hopefully can see on the screen right now uh, next year, we are not having an ICTM annual conference as we did last month in Peoria because Chicago is hosting the NCTM regional from November 29th to December 1st. Uh, Adam, if you could advance one more. Um, that's a, a year away, but what's not a year away, which is what's less than a month away, is the proposal submission deadline, which is December 1st. Um, and so if you go to the NCTM website, um, you can... Um, sign up to submit a proposal. Uh, there are some really interesting strands that uh, Pat Trafton, who's running the program committee and, and her colleagues have come oh, up I with. I lost you, Sendel. Are you still there? Yes. Uh, there, there are some great uh, strands. I am not uh, hearing you, Sendel. I don't know if other people can at this time. So I will keep talking. As okay. If they can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm not sure. Okay. I can hear you now. So what, okay. I can hear you now. Why don't you keep great. going on? Okay, sure. um, and uh, if you could just uh, go back. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so uh, December 1st, which is in uh, just a couple weeks, um, is the submission deadline for proposals. One of the really nice perks for NCTM regionals is that if you are a presenter, you get to attend the whole conference for free, which is uh, a substantial savings from not being free. Um, so <laughs> the, the next slide. Uh, just um, is giving you a quick preview. We we have stepped up our webinar game this year, and uh, we're planning webinars every month. Several of them are around technology topics, like Adam has shared with us today. Um, and in between, we're sort of addressing some other stuff. Uh, next month, Zach Herman, who is currently on the ICTM board, is going to present on using complex group tasks to support student learning. If you've ever seen him at the ICTM conference or elsewhere, you know that he is uh, knowledgeable and very thoughtful about these questions and has tried a lot of stuff with his own students um, and works with a group that is an ICTM affiliate called the Complex Instruction Consortium. And they have a lot of really interesting stuff that they have been working on. So um, we also have some other webinars coming up and we'll, we'll share that information soon. If you'd like to present, or if you can suggest a topic or a presenter, we'd love your feedback. My email is there on the screen. I'll also put it in the chat window. And that would be really helpful to, um, to help us know sort of what people are interested in and, and what else might be coming up. And my last slide is the next slide. Uh, so thank you uh, for being here. If you, are not, if you are a member of ICTM, we appreciate it because uh, that membership is part of what enables us to support professional learning and community efforts like these. If you are not a member yet, you can go to that URL, which I also put in the chat, and you can become a member. Um, it is much easier than you might remember because we switched to a new platform and it's a 
even a child could do it now, or I guess even an adult can do it now because children can do anything on computers. Um, and finally, <laughs> when, when you sign off of this webinar, there will be a survey. Uh, it is a brief survey. Um, it is just about uh, 10 questions, some of them simple yes, no, or scales. Um, it should take you no more than 10 minutes, probably closer to five. It would be really appreciated if you could complete that survey because it's very helpful to help us think about what kind of offerings in terms of webinars and otherwise we should be providing that are useful to you. Um, so uh, I think there's one more, but uh, that's basically it. Um, and if you have questions, if you can keep putting them into the GoToWebinar interface, Whoops. then Adam will uh, address those. Are you still there? Yes. Um, so basically, thank you everyone for coming. It was a pleasure working with you today. And I am available for a few minutes. If there's some questions, Sendel, that people still wanted answered, they're welcome to stick around. And I can uh, just share some thoughts on their questions if they have them. But for everyone else, thank you for coming. Thanks for being a teacher and for, for making a difference. And I, I highly encourage you to, to look more into how Desmos can be a tool in your classroom to help students learn meaningful math. So, so thanks. Okay, so, uh, so Sendel, so is far, there, are you still there? Yes. Uh, it, it does not look like there are any further questions right now. I think people are still taking in all the knowledge you have dropped on us. Um, and you've given us a lot of good links. <laughs> I know it's a lot. A um, lot in 45 minutes. We'll be sending a follow-up with um, some of this information in the email also. Uh, you may have been taking notes, uh, in just in case you weren't. Um, and uh, you can also reach Adam um, through Twitter or email or, or whatever. And uh, I know he likes to talk about this stuff. So you'll probably get an even more informative answer from him. So with that, uh, thank you so much to Adam for sharing his knowledge with us today. Thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, thanks to those of you who are ICTM members. And I hope that we will be seeing you again next month with Zach. And we'll be seeing you presenting at the NCTM Regional next year, if not sooner. So thank you. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you then. All right. Thanks, Endel. Bye, everyone.